no matter the client, whether it's an athlete, somebody coming back from rehab, or somebody trying to lose weight. A good program is just like building a building. It starts with a good foundation. And your foundation when it comes to the body is referred to as the pillar. The pillar with Charlie Marlowe today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. This is Garrett Williamson, president of Personal Edge Fitness. We're talking about the foundation of of the body today, we're talking about what's called the pillar. Now we'll get to that in just a second, but if you have any questions concerning this topic or any other, please feel free to contact us at 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That is also our website and our Facebook page, which is Personal Edge Fitness. Now you're welcome to call us about any questions with this show, or as always, any questions you have dispelling the myths of health, fitness, or wellness? Now, I was talking to one of our exercise specialists. He got back from a conference recently, a great certification. He's actually been a guest on the show before. And he started to extrapolate and talk to me about something known as the pillar. And he regarded it as the foundation of the body when it comes to putting a fitness program together. I'm so fascinated by what he had learned and what he picked up that I definitely wanted to have him back on the show. Now, he was on the show with us recently talking about this certification. This goes a bit deeper. I want to welcome to the show our exercise specialist, Charlie Marlowe. Charlie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Garrett. Glad to be back. I'm glad you're here, man. Now, you know, I was, I was talking in the introduction about this foundation, something we were talking about, but you refer to it as the pillar. Now, tell me about where you were learning this, and then tell us a little bit about the pillar. I went to a certification course about a month ago, um, and it's the Pain-Free Performance Specialist Certification. Basically, they teach you the six foundational movement patterns, a, a warm-up system to go with that, and also the pillar, which is the foundational piece of, of the certification. And it's basically made up of the hips, core, and shoulders, just that, that middle section of your body, really where all the power is generated from. And so sure. we really focused on that um, the whole weekend. On the last podcast, you talked about that. You talked about the, some of the functional movements, and I've seen you doing those on the on the floor with pretty much all your clients. I mean, this is yep. really neat watching this put together. In fact, we had one of your senior clients talk about he liked the methodology. He mm-hmm. liked the way you were breaking it down and finding his weaknesses and kind of attacking those. But when it comes to the to the pillar, to the foundation, that elevates it a little bit. Talk a little bit about what you're looking for and what we should be concerned with as far as that concept. There's a few things that you're really looking for when you're assessing a client. So one would be uh, pillar stability. And so basically what that is, like I said, the pillars made up of your hips, core, and shoulders. And so from there stems all of your, your limbs, your arms, your legs. And so... It's basically um, where your, all your power comes from. Right, yeah. I mean, that's it's generated from your pillar. And so one way to achieve pillar stability is using co-contractions, meaning you flex all your muscles in the pillar in order to maintain stability in the pillar. And so by building a solid foundation throughout all the the six foundational movement patterns that we learn, that's going to ensure that injury is a lot less likely to happen. Break down, if you would, those six foundational that you were talking about a minute ago. Break those down for everybody. Squat, hinge, like a hip hinge. Um, Then you would have push, pull, a single leg exercise, lunge, and then carry. So like a loaded carry, carrying grocery bag, something like that. Right. You can look back. There's a podcast that where Charlie was a guest. It got a lot deeper into that. We're not going to cover that today. We've got some other things we want to move on from the pillar and talking about mobility as far as different joints are concerned. Because when somebody thinks of a joint, they think of a, a lot of motion going on. Yep. You know, yep. heck of a lot of motion going on. But that's not really the case. Like you say, a lot of people, they hear mobility and they think, oh, I need to have more range of motion. That's what I need. Right. And so... They do all these mobility drills and mobility is great, but only in a joint that needs to be mobile. So something that I came across in my own studying and stuff is the joint by joint approach by Mike Boyle. Basically, it boils down to... No pun intended. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Yeah, no pun intended. So let's just start with the foot, for example. So the foot is supposed to be a stable joint. You need a good foundation down there at your foot. Right. And then the next joint up is your ankle. Your, Your ankle needs to be very mobile. And so that is the next joint up. Then you go from there, the knee. The knee needs to be a very stable joint. It doesn't need a lot of mobility in there. Um, And then next, it will be the hip. 
your hip, you need a lot of mobility. So as it goes up, it alternates from st stable joint to mobile joint. So it's um, switching the whole time. I mean, I mean, yep. you said you said foot was foot was stable or, or stable, stable, yep. and then you got more mobility. That makes sense. You got more motion in the ankle. I mean, you can do foot rolls. So yep. And then your knee is um, stable. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you want that thing stable, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't want a wobbly knee. That's where you run into some problems. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's when you run into ACL problems and mm -hmm. what have you. Yep. So. All right, that makes sense. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, yeah. but that that uh, I've never thought of it that way, and and I'm sure our listeners have not thought about it that way about about a uh, foot being a joint itself, but it's just a stable joint, so it doesn't have quite as much motion and what have you, and it alternates as it goes up. Pretty intelligent design, I would say. Definitely. Yeah, I didn't come up with it myself. I wish I did though. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I understand. Going back to the podcast I was on before, talking right. about training without pain, pain-free performance. Right. I think it's a really great example of what we were taught at the certification so basically right. with the joint being stable you don't want mo very much motion there it needs to be solid and so sure. um like i said above it and below it are going to be two mobile joints right. where where you run into problems is is if one of those mobile joints loses its mobility it starts to stiffen up in there for whatever reason right that can lead to problems either up or down the chain so let, let's use the leg for example because okay. this is a very common issue um Let's, the knee is a very should be a very stable joint. Right. With the ankle and, and hip, which are above and below it, um, if one of those has some sort of mobility issue, you can start to see some knee problems. And a lot of people might go, "Oh man, my knees really bother me. I need to do a lot of uh, knee strength or leg strengthening exercises that will help my knee. Um, I need to do a lot of quad work, or I need, I need to do something that focuses on my knee." Whereas that might not be the case. It could be something that's in your hip that's restricting your mobility in your hip, and that's putting more stress on the knee joint. Oh, I got um, you. So it's the immobility is actually, in this scenario, is actually in the hip, but it's causing stress in the knee. Yep. That would be like a missed self-diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, they've right. got a knee, knee problem. Mm -hmm. So this is similar. I did a podcast with Makai Rockwell of Fleet Feet, and we were talking about what well, you see this in here. People mm -hmm. coming in, knee problems, hip problems. We find out, we look at their shoes really quick and find yeah. out that they've got shoes that are completely worn out. So they've lost the cushion of them. Their shoe is actually causing hip problems. Well, this is similar. If you've got a tight, for lack of a better way of saying it, a very simple way of saying it, if you've got some tight hips, you could have some, some knee pain. Exactly. So, and going back to mobility, uh, the mobility is basically flexibility plus strength. And so right. different from flexibility, you're not just going through a range of motion, but you're also are able to be strong to that range of motion. And sure. so that's where mobility sometimes kind of the line is blurred between what really is mobility and, and Right. It's not just getting a range of motion, but it's also being strong through that range of motion. When it comes to looking at these different concepts and understanding the stable and the mobile joints, the more mobile joints, what have you, and give me some examples that you've seen that you've dealt with, some problems that we you've seen, some common problems that you've seen with clients, and anything that might relate to something we're familiar with, you know, sports or what have you. Going back to the last podcast we did, um, right. we really focused on the corrective exercises that I that I've been doing and. Sure. One of those, uh, a lot, well, I'd say a lot of those deal with improving the pillar, building pillar stability. Right. And so basically uh, another exercise that I use a lot with my clients is the dead bug. Dead bug. Dead bug. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's got a unique name. But <laughs> I'm it, ready to hear about it's, this it's one. It's a very effective exercise. So yeah. um, the dead bug and the bird dog, they're very strange <laughs> names, but they're good. I, I would think, knowing, watching you work with your clients, I would think that, that words like dead bug and, and bird dog would probably, you know, give them the shakes in the middle of the night or something, you know, so yeah. I don't think they're that bad. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> uh, there's different ways to do this exercise and the, it can look really easy or it can look really hard depending right. on the intent you put in it, how you go through the exercise. And so which one is this now? Um, it's both of them. Both of them. Okay. I'll just, okay. let's do the bird dog, for example, because okay. that one's a little easier to explain. So. Basically, you're on your hands and knees, and what I tell the clients first is to brace their core like they're trying to break the concrete below them. Oh, wow. And so okay. basically, that means really drive those hands and knees into the floor. We want to create as much tension right. throughout our body as possible. It causes a rigid core. More right, like yeah. That, yeah. So I would tell them, you know, if I try to push you over right now, you shouldn't budge. Like, that's how solid you should be. And so that's the, the core stability, the pillar stability that sure. we're talking about. And so from there, I'll have them pick up one of their arms and then the opposite leg, and they'll go out in front of them, reaching out. And so that creates a little bit of imbalance there. So you've got a, like a right arm going out, left leg going yep, back. So, exactly. So, okay. Okay. And so from there, they got a little bit of imbalance, but their core should be stable. And so right. that's what's maintaining 
uh, their balance. And so as they come out, they're still pushing into that floor and then they slowly pull it back in. And what that's doing, um, for one, it's priming their, their core for to lift a, a heavier load throughout like a squat or a deadlift. Sure. Yeah, I'll use those exercises before we get into the movement right. in order to just prepare their pillar to lift a heavy load, basically. You're basically using that technique to create a muscle memory for more complex exercises. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it, I don't mean to simplify it so much, but I mean, that's basically what it seems like is happening. They're, they're looking to feel that same feeling in the core when they're trying to crush the concrete as you mm-hmm. say when they're doing a squat when they're going into something exactly more yeah it's definitely meant to transfer over into whenever they're going through the actual workout that way um, whenever they're they're lifting you know a heavier squat or a deadlift right they don't have to think about oh i gotta brace my core like it's just art it's a natural thing that happens as they go through the movement their core is already tight right and so and, and that's why i really think it's effective to work on prior to the, the actual workout Right. just to get that pillar ready to go. It's almost like movement patterns that we do with more advanced exercises where you take like a broomstick and go through an exercise to try mm-hmm. to learn the form. This is a step deeper. Yeah. You know, I mean, teaching basically teaching the core how to hold itself still, how to, as you say, the pillar, how to keep that solid. Anytime you do that, you've probably heard people talk about transverse abdominus and core is a big buzzword right now. Charlie's getting really deep into this. This is where people are trying to get out of plank. The only thing is that once you're finished with the plank, you've got to keep that thought process, like you're saying, and make sure that transfers over to these, some of these more complex exercises. I think exercises such as that, like the bird dog, it really can create, easily create that kind of muscle memory. So when you're doing some of those, can you use them for evaluating? Can you use them to see if they've got a if they've got a weakness as far as that core is concerned? Yeah, you definitely can. So um, you would do like a right arm, then left leg, and then you would switch, and right. then you do the opposite limbs. And so definitely, like if one side, if you're a little more wobbly, right. um, you can definitely start to see some imbalances there. And then there's other exercises you can do to to focus more on those areas. And another thing that I often you know tell my clients is this is a little term that kind of explains what the core stability does is sure. proximal stability for distal mobility, meaning, and that's a lot of medical terms. I'm about to say, break that down. Yeah, so, we're going to need to so break this down to dot yeah, to dot. Yeah. <laughs> proximal meaning close to the body, right. stability, stable, and then distal is further away from the body, mobility. So basically what that is saying is you need to have good pillar stability in order to have proper mobility in your limbs. And okay. so... Um, you're going to be a lot more powerful if you're more stable in your pillar and then you go to explode off the floor or, or do a, a press or something like that. Right. So that's why we build up that pillar stability is so that we're more solid through the middle right. and then we can express more power through our limbs. That's like doing a squat or something, holding a ball out away from you, away from mm-hmm. your body. The farther that goes away from your body, then the more pressure it's going to be, more pressure, the harder it's going to be on your back and what have you. But if you're holding that stability like you're talking about, well, then, you know, you're going to, your back's going to be protected, abs are going to be protected, and you're going to be able to lift more. Yep. Period. So safely for that matter. So just like uh, the famous quote about about levers, give me a place to stand and I can move the world for that matter. Yeah. Well, that, and that has to do with uh, having that in this particular case, it happens to do with having that strong core and keeping things solid at your base, I guess you say, it's your foundation. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. And, and I really want to try to come on and talk about this because this is a concept that's overlooked a lot. Yeah. It's easy to go into sling and steel, you know, uh, going into Olympic lifts and, and trying to create good form out of, out of complex exercises or imitate good form, I would say. But it all starts with that, like you say, that foundation. That's where you should start with, with making sure you've got that strong core first and then move into the more advanced moves. So definitely. Yeah. Um, and I will say this, a lot of times you'll see people break workouts down into, you know, body segments, like right. chest, chest, triceps, back right. biceps, something like that. And that that's great. If you're trying to be a bodybuilder, if you're trying to win a bodybuilding competition, you know, that can be right. an effective way to train. But if you're, you know, if you're just wanting to be, live your best life and be functional and, sure. and, and live without pain, the best way to train your body is, is as one unit. Right. And, and that's what I really try to focus on when I'm running my sessions. Uh, I try to train movements, not muscles, you know. Oh, so that's like, great. <laughs> you know, I, I try to, you know, go through different movement patterns, you right. know, and not just worry about, you know, individualizing each muscle, but how can we make each movement more effective for that client? So that way when they go out in their daily life and they're squatting down to pick something up or, or right. they're picking up or they're, they're pressing something over their head, you know, whether that be their kid or, or grandkid or something like that, they're able to do that more effectively and not have to worry about, oh, is this going to 
hurt my back later? Is this going to mess my shoulder up? Like they're just able to live their life. This is why functional training is so incredibly important. And I appreciate you pointing that out because we had a slogan years ago. I mean, that we use, we train you for life. Yeah. Of course, my marketing department loved the fact of the double entendre. But the key to that was that, you know, it's one thing to do a bicep curl. Well, that's fantastic. But picking a dog food bag up off the floor and throwing it over your shoulder, there are a lot of complex movements involved with that. So mm-hmm. if I let Charlie go on this one, he would break it all down for you, I guarantee you. <laughs> so, uh, but but you, seriously, you've got a lot of movements going on there. Yeah. And replicating those here in a safe environment in the facility, starting off with, like you say, Tightening that core, really, really, really getting the strong foundation um, is going to keep you from hurting yourself outside. That, that's really what we're after. In fact, you know, I'm going to say, it, guys, if it's not going to be water, you know, I'm going to mention living your level of wellness. That's the key to it. You want yeah. to be able to do all those different other activities and everything outside the facility, what we call extracurricular activities, yeah. <laughs> and not and not hurt yourself. Absolutely. So appreciate you telling me about this. Now, this is the fall. I had Charlie tell us a little bit about his background last time he was here. So I uh, played a few years of football, definitely. Yep. We've got a slate of good games coming up this weekend. So you're going to be, uh, what, playing croquet in the backyard? or? Oh, uh, no, nah, man. I, you know I'm going to be on the couch <laughs> watching football. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a big done. week for SEC country. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Pretty exciting for that matter. Mm-hmm. So how's your team doing? Pretty good so far. So okay. um, for those of you who don't know, I'm an Ole Miss Rebels fan. There so you uh, you know, don't hate on me for that. But <laughs> this year, you know, we're actually doing pretty well. Uh, yeah. Offense is, is playing really well. and. Cool. Defense has picked it up, so right. uh, we got a big matchup this week. So uh, you know, I'm excited for it. What do you miss most about not being on the field? I've never asked you that. Yeah, uh, man, there's so many things. Uh, honestly, the game is awesome. There's nothing like it just being out there on the field. But sure. the guys, just the locker room, the atmosphere. Uh, right. You know, you make some of your best friends out there. Just going through that, just a one team, one goal. Right. Uh, you know, you only experience that with those guys, and so. Um, definitely just the locker room and just just being with the team it, it's one of my my, my best memories of, of playing football you still keep in touch with some of those guys for sure yeah um, I actually have quite a few that still play college football today and that, that's another awesome. reason I love watching is just sure. able to keep up with those guys uh, I had a few teammates that on Ole Miss and a few on Tulane played a few weekends ago and got to watch them play and awesome. they did great another one of my teammates Stetson Bennett for uh, Georgia he's He's done pretty good at quarterback, and, you know, and he's, <laughs> so. he's played well for him. And, right. and so, yeah, Stetson, he, he's a heck of a football player, and, and he's a good guy. So I, I love watching my former teammates play. Well, I don't know if we'll ever match that culture because, I mean, I understand. I, I, I ran track myself, and I was on a football team, but I can understand that camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, playing for the team and having that culture. I certainly hope that we are doing as, clo- as best we can. To replicate that culture here at Personal Edge, that's yeah, for, sure. for sure. So I mean, we got a family. A, yeah, that we did. It is, and it's a it's a rather cohesive group, and you're a strong part of that. So I Thank appreciate you, you being with us. Be part. I'm sure we haven't finished breaking down all of this information, so I'm sure we're going to have you back on. So I appreciate you being here. Yeah, today. sure. I'm glad to be back and talk more about it. Yeah, sounds good, man. And good luck to your team this weekend. Thank you. you Absolutely. Too. The reason we wanted to get into that today was understanding that foundation is so important. You hear things like core, you hear words thrown out like that, you hear transverse abdominus, you hear all these things, but you don't really know how to put them all together. It takes those kind of expertise to understand exactly how to break that down and build your workout correctly so that you're not hurting yourself. The fact that Charlie has gone into this study about remaining pain-free is at our core here at Personal Edge Fitness and making sure that people don't get hurt. Our youngest client, seven, our most senior clients, 94, all the way through it, uh, whether it's an athlete or somebody learning to walk again or somebody just losing, losing weight, the last thing we want to do, the last thing we want to do is to get anybody hurt. And that's why we'll break things down into this level is to make sure that we're going to protect the body because without your body, I mean, where else are you going to live? But protecting your core, it's just one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for listening today. Please like and share and take care. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.